Hey guys, this is Nick from Straight Line Graphics, and I'm going to be coming to you today with a quick tutorial on how to use lights. And um, in this tutorial, basically, I'm going to show you new lights, and um, also I'm going to show you just a quick tutorial on the keyframing so that you guys get that down pat. So, basically, guys, these are all the lights here. There's um, regular light, area light, spotlight, target light, infinite light, and then there's also sunlight and sky. And essentially what all these do, light emits light from the bottom and uh, basically yeah it's my preferred uh, type of light and essentially you can add two different types of shadows there's, oh sorry about this, um, we actually have global illumination on, let me just uh, take that off here. Alright, yeah so I'll show you that here, uh, there's the soft shadow then um, I'll also show you uh, the hard shadow, which is not preferred for me, but um, you guys might like it. Here, as you can see, it's just a much darker shadow. Now, now we're done with that light, I'll show you area light. Area light essentially gives a mirror effect, and um, it basically cuts off the light in two sections, and it's really cool, I find. Uh, there's also a spotlight. There's um, basically no difference between spotlight and target light. The only thing that target light does is it just gives you an actual target to aim your light, and that's basically the difference. So as you can see, it gives a cool like stage light effect. And obviously, guys, you know you can change the settings for each one of these um, down here, uh, like colors and all this different stuff. So this is infinite light guys, basically this, it's not going to do anything at first, you're going to want to rotate it towards the ground, and essentially what infinite light does is it just lights everything. And I find it's cool if you have uh, like a, if you need a big space lit for uh, a project that's going to take up a large amount of space, as you can see, that's uh, it right there. And now I don't think there's much more except for, uh, there. I can show you guys sky. Sorry, delete that text out. So there it is, and the sky. So guys, basically what the sky is is it just lights everything up, and it's good to have a base before you start adding different lights because it adds um, a good illumination. Like if you guys are like, oh no, why aren't my colors showing up uh, as they should? It's because you don't have proper lighting. All right. So uh, once that's done, I'll show you guys just uh, basic keyframing. So uh, here is the keyframe box. Basically, um, you guys are probably going to be like confused with all this different stuff. This basically, guys, is the amount of frames that you want in your um, in your project. So if you're running at 30 frames per second, let's say uh, 90 would obviously be three seconds, and um, so you can extend it. Generally, a good intro is around 300 to 400, which is not too long but not too short. Uh, a really short one, which I just released, is, was only 150 or 170, and that uh, was a bit too short for me. So, preferably, you're going to want around 300. And this box basically goes down uh, through all your frames, and you can extend it by doing like this. But if you want it more precise, you want to close it, and you can actually get to each individual frame and yeah that's about it um, you guys basically here this is um, just to play as you can see nothing's happening because I haven't keyframed anything and this is just to reverse through it now note guys um, if you have a really complicated design it might not reverse fully and every time you're dealing with like through C um, you have to um, when you're starting off, bring it um, all the way back before uh, you start it again because it might uh, like keyframe too early and you'll start getting really confused and think there's something wrong. So yeah, I'll just show you guys uh, a typical uh, keyframing thing. Um, basically, regular keyframing, when you're moving around, you're going to want to click here. So see how uh, this is X coordinates, which is left and right. Y, which is up and down, and then there's also Z, which is back and forth. So once you have that, um, I'm just going to keyframe this. It's just going to be a simple movement. So you're going to want to go to animation and add keyframes. So they go red. Now you guys got to remember, 
this is where you place the keyframe. So as you can see right here, you see a little dot? When you click it, it highlights in orange. That's your keyframe. So when you bring this all the way to 80, uh, you're, you're going to want to change it. So uh, if you want to move your text, obviously. So I'll make it go up and to the side. And as you can see, uh, guys, Cinema 40 actually um, is really interesting because it doesn't do the exact motion. It finds the quickest path to uh, where your next coordinate is. So as you can see, look, it's just uh, moving. And if you want to slow that down a bit, you can always remember, you can always drag your keyframe, which has everything set on it. So you can bring it all the way to 160, which essentially makes it, I think that was double um, as long. And obviously, guys, you can press the reverse, reverse button and it brings it back because it's not too complicated. Now, when you're dealing with cameras, guys, um, cameras, the main keyframing is right here. Some of you guys may get mixed up when you're keyframing. Never use your keyframe that goes here in the animation box with the camera keyframing that goes here. You're not going to want to mess that up. That's a problem that I had when I first started. So once you have that camera, the camera essentially is keyframed by here and you can see the keyframe button right here, this help. So you just click the keyframe button here, then you can move your camera around to here. Oh sorry, I'll move it there and then move it over here and put a keyframe there. So that means guys it basically moves from my original object where I press the key to the place where I press the key second. And that's a really cool feature if you want like a uh, nice smooth camera movement. And yeah, that's about it guys. Um, have fun with that and uh, please comment, rate, subscribe for other tutorials that you uh, might need. Alright, thanks.